Hello, my name is Kasim Javed. I'm an academic rheumatologist from Oxford and I'm the musculoskeletal GCIP clinical lead. So my name is Edward Blair. I'm one of the consultant clinical geneticists in Oxford and I'm uh, the local rare disease lead for the Genomics England 100,000 Genomes Project. Can you tell us more about the 100,000 Genomes Project? How did it start? The first human genome cost over three billion dollars, US dollars, to sequence. We can now routinely sequence or analyse a patient's whole genetic code, their genome, for less than a thousand dollars. The Prime Minister, David Cameron, following on from the London Olympics in 2012, realised the power of genomics in medicine and the power of genome sequencing for developing uh, genomic related industries in the United Kingdom. The Prime Minister therefore announced following the Olympics an Olympic legacy programme which has been known as the 100,000 Genomes Project. This is a programme to sequence the genome from approximately 70,000 patients within the NHS, generating a total of 100,000 human genomes. What's the point of GEL? What's it trying to achieve? The 100,000 Genomes Project has four main aims. Firstly, it wants to develop a genomic medicine service for the United Kingdom within the NHS. It wants to kickstart uh, genomic industry through private enterprise. It wants to increase knowledge to develop new treatments, new devices and new diagnostics for patients with genetic conditions. And it wants to provide this within an overarching ethical framework. So, uh, Ed, what sort of rare disease patients is GEL for? The Genomics England project is for a broad range of patients with uh, rare uh, genetic conditions. Uh, from virtually everybody's system. Okay. Um, your own particular interest, I believe, is in musculoskeletal conditions. There are a number of patient groups that can be recruited through those particular categories, such as patients with undiagnosed skeletal dis uh, dysplasias, patients with craniosynostosis, patients with osteogenesis imperfecta, patients with stenosis, amongst others. How can we find out more information about the nominations that can be included in the GEL programme? The whole of England is covered by 13 bodies known as genomic medicine centres. These were uh, awarded genomic medicine centre status by Genomics England and NHS England following a competitive tendering process. Most of the genomic medicine centres are based around the regional clinical genetic services. It's not always, but mostly. Um, if you wanted to find out about recruiting patients to a genomic, the Genomics England 100,000 Genomes Project, you could do this by contacting your local clinical genome genetic service or by contacting your local genomic medicine centre. Okay. And what defines a rare disease as a rare disease? How common is rare? Rare diseases are classically defined as less than 1 in 2,000 in the population. Um, but if you take the totality of patients with rare diseases, rare disease patients aren't rare. Probably 1 in 17 people in England or the United Kingdom at the moment would be classified as having a rare condition and many of those patients would be eligible for inclusion in the 100,000 Genomes Project. That means most adult rheumatologists will have some rare disease patients in their clinics. That's absolutely the case and most adult and all adult rheumatologists will sit within one of these GMC areas that we talked about earlier. So most adult rheumatologists will have direct access to recruit patients to the 100,000 Genomes Project. Are there any of these rare disease patients that shouldn't be referred to the GEL program? If patients are already have a molecular genetic diagnosis that has been made using routine testing uh, methods, or if it's really felt that that patient's condition doesn't have a tractable single gene Mendelian basis, then probably at this stage those types of patients shouldn't be recruited. But many patients who have effectively undiagnosed at the molecular level rare genetic conditions um, or if the condition's not definitely already been shown to be genetic, but there's good basis for feeling that it is genetic, then those types of patients can be recruited to this programme. Well, that's quite important. So if I've got a patient who's got a diagnosis, but we haven't found the gene, they could be eligible for the GEL programme. Absolutely. And then, of course, the benefit for that would be a specific molecular diagnosis for your patient, but also for you as a clinician and as an academic, would be that you could then involve that patient and that data that's generated in further research. Okay, Ed, so I've got a patient in clinic who I think might be eligible. What's, what are the key points I need to bring up with the patient and what are the next steps I should do if I want to include them in the 100,000 Genomes Project? I think the thing to stress to the patient is that this is principally uh, a clinical diagnostic process, but there is a res large research element to this whole programme downstream. 
There's also, as I mentioned earlier, the potential for a private enterprise being involved in this programme. So the patient needs to understand all of this, these various arms of the 100,000 Genomes Project. They would need to understand that they would need to sign consent forms for it to be involved in the programme and they would need to understand that they may need to give further blood samples over and above their routine care. The patients also need to understand that they will have an ongoing relationship with the programme uh, maybe for some years to come. Oh, so how quickly, sh what's the shortest time people could get results back? Are we talking about weeks, months or years? At the present time, the first results have been re returned to patients, but these are patients who have been in the programme now maybe for a year or more. Okay. But the aim of the programme in due course is to make this a clinically relevant turnaround time for patients' results. So the aim is that we will be returning results back to patients in um, the timescale of weeks rather than months or years. So if, if the patient's interested, what's the next step then? Do I have to consent them in the clinic? How does it work? Is it the same across all hospitals? It's not the same in every GMC. And I think it would be important for any individual clinician to speak to their local genomic medicine centre to find out what the local process is. Some genomic medicine centres have uh, established um, clinics where patients can go to be uh, consented. Others have research nurses who, who will consent patients for clinicians. Um, but the process does vary from GMC to GMC and it's important to know what's happening in your own local area. And if the patient or I want to find out more information about the 100,000 Genomes Project, what are the web resources or where can I look for information? There are fantastic web resources for uh, patients and for clinicians uh, by going to the 100,000 Genomes Project or by looking at Genomics England through common search engines such as Google. There's also resources for clinicians through Health Education England in terms of genomic education and further uh, uh, um, modules that, of study that someone could undertake in genomic medicine, which has all been wrapped up as part of this programme. That's fantastic, Ed. I think I'd better make my way to clinic and find some more patients to refer to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.